from Channel 3, CT23 with Eric Parker. Good morning and thank you for being with us. The scene that played out on the Gold Star Memorial Bridge two Fridays ago was, was just awful. Black billowing smoke, raging fire from the southbound side of the I-95 span uh, over the Thames River could be seen for miles. One person tragically was killed there. Two others involved in the accident on the bridge were saved by the heroic actions of an off-duty New London police lieutenant and two civilians. Channel 3 New London Bureau Chief Luke Hydash filed this report about that on Monday. This was what Lieutenant Cornelius Rogers saw Friday morning on his way home from the gym. Something you or I would run away from, not him. When I went back around, I just tried to give him a tug and I saw that his leg was stuck. So then I had to reach in further and grab his leg. It's been three days since he helped a stranger get to safety as fire quickly moved toward them. I think that's what it makes us human beings is to make sure that he would, you know, be selfless and help others at a time of need. For Rogers, it's sinking in. It made me emotional. I actually cried. Uh, a gentleman, just a regular passerby, exited his vehicle and gave me a hug. There were other heroes that Friday morning. Joining me to talk about the entire emergency response is New London's Fire Chief, Thomas Curcio. Thank you very much for being with us, Chief. I know you guys, your crews, your men and women respond to the bridge for incidents all the time. 60,000 cars a day, it's bound to happen. But when a big one like this comes in, is the response a little different? Um, yes, no, normally any given day, um, we share the responsibilities up there with Groton uh, Fire Department. It's either Pequannock Bridge or the city of Groton. Um, we have a standard operating procedure in place that whenever there's an incident on there, uh, both departments will be dispatched. Uh, we dispatch a lot of equipment up there for our own safety, just to block the lanes because it is um, heavily traveled, as you mentioned. Um, that day when the call came in, um, you know, all 16 of our personnel were dispatched to the scene. We, we have 16 on duty at all times here. So all of our equipment was dispatched up to the bridge. Um, the first arriving ladder truck was giving um, a good size up that there was a, a, a large volume of fire with vehicles actually still traveling on the highway. So um, when I did hop in my vehicle, I, I did call for, you know, state police, DOT, DEEP, um, I even call for the crash truck from um, the Groton New London Airport because I, I didn't know at that time what actually was burning. We could just see the plume of smoke from here at the firehouse at headquarters. Um, we did. We got up there, uh, shut down both highways because we didn't know what was burning underneath. Um, Pequannock Bridge had just arrived before us. Um, we pulled up um, shortly behind them. Uh, the crew from our engine company uh, deployed uh, hand lines and started, you know, using foam to extinguish the fire. As you get there and you realize what you've got, uh, how do you sort of formulate that response? There's, we're looking at some video from under the bridge, some, uh, you know, structures were on fire down below, fortunately no homes, but there was burning down below. There was fuel that was on fire running in the pedestrian lanes. Just take us through being, being the boss, being the incident commander, being there, our viewers are used to, you know, if you call 911, you guys show up and it's, we appreciate that help. And it's, but when it's that big, how do you wrap your head around who does what? You talked about all the people you called in. How did it work? Um, actually, everything worked out well. Um, probably maybe two months ago, we had just had a traffic incident management um, meeting with DOT, um, individuals from Millstone, state police, New London police to discuss what would happen if we had to shut down a highway, a major highway during an event that might occur at Millstone. Um, I'm also the emergency management here. So, so we discussed what we would do if the plans in place, I, I believe Groton police um, were also present at that meeting and everything went into place that day. You know, I, I understand that it, you know, created some traffic nightmares, um, but you know, on the side streets, I, I, I mean, I, I think that's the least those individuals had to worry about. Um, you know, to the unfortunate incident that, you know, transpired up on, on top of the, the bridge. But when you're talking about how we operate here, we have a battalion chief on duty at all times. So they're in charge of the shift. And um, I, you know, I was here at the time. So we both responded at the same time. And I, I just realized that, you know, we were over water. Um, we didn't know where that fuel was going. We didn't know if it was gas. We didn't know at the time what it was. Um, just that a tanker truck had rolled over. Um, our our dispatch center here in New London did a phenomenal job because uh, I think in the in the first few minutes I rattled off like ten agencies I wanted to respond, and then it continued even more when we got up there. So 
I was lucky to have an additional battalion chief in the building that day. Uh, he was here doing some training and, um, you know, he came over and told me, look, I can see the smoke plume from here at headquarters. So I asked him, you know, just get your gear, hop in the rig. And, and we left, uh, you know, we call for a tanker task force, um, which brings in additional water to the scene because uh, there there are no water supplies up there on the bridge for us, which worked out really well, too. Um, you know, we had companies as far as Hartford responding with foam, which we we canceled. But talking about communications, the extra battalion chief that I had actually went below the building. I, below the bridge, he was actually to, able to crawl over on the pedestrian walkway and walk down that way and get to their command center. So that worked out really good for communications between him and I. He was letting me know what was burning under the bridge. And the battalion chief up that was on duty on top of the bridge was directing the operations, the foam operations, and making sure his crews were safe up on top of the bridge. I want to ask you, because it occurred to me as I was looking at those pictures, you know, and we saw afterwards the, the, the structural supports of the bridge just charred from that burning fuel going down. I mean, at any point up there, did you think, geez, is this bridge going to hold all these fire trucks and all these people? I mean, was there a thought that maybe that was a risk or, or how do you evaluate that? We did every day because of the static load of our apparatus up there. We're, we're worried about maybe one of those bridge bridge spans, um, you know, not being able to support that weight. I mean, we had a lot of we had a lot of trucks up there at once, and then we started bringing them off and only leaving one at a time. And if we needed to shuttle water to that engine company was up there, we did that and, um, you know, withdrew all of our ladder trucks and support vehicles. And then, um, you know, DOT was right on scene um, very quickly, as well as the DEEP. Um, we had the Coast Guard down below, the Marine Group we requested. There, there was a lot of resources that were there. And, um, you know, I think everything went very well. Um, you know, the rescue of that individual that was in the car, um, I'm, I'm very, or we're very lucky, and he's very lucky that he was not trapped in that car because there was substantial damage to that vehicle um, afterwards that we realized. And, uh, you know, for Lieutenant Rogers to be there in those other individuals was, um, you know, a matter of minutes before the fire engulfed that car. So that was huge. And, uh, you know, our condolences go out to the Fouquet family. Um, very sad that he couldn't, you know, be saved as well. Well, it certainly was, as you said, an incredible response from so many different agencies. And that's why we wanted to talk to you to get an idea of just what went into putting it together. And, and as you said, there was the tragic loss of life. But all in all, a pretty amazing that everyone could work together, operate like that and get that under control as quickly as possible. We really appreciate you joining us here on CT23, Chief. We hope we'll have you back in the future. And, and good job to all your folks and those on the Groton side as well. Thank you. Yeah, very proud of our crews. They train They train hard every day. They're doing something every day to train and get ready for the next incident. So I thank you. All right, Chief Thomas Curcio from the New London Fire Department. Thanks for being with us.